The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker before applying. Niche Advice Limited is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Hi, it's Brian here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Uh, I'm gonna talk about inherited properties in this session. Um, we have a lot of clients actually that come to us. We used to be historically, we used to be will writers. So we used to do estate planning and will writing. So we've got a lot of clients that approach us um, in regards to inherited properties, um, which is a bit of a minefield, okay? So let's let's take a scenario. Let's take an example of a case that I've been working on. Um, uh, father passes away, owns a number of buy-to-lets. They've all got mortgages on them. Maybe one or two of the buy-to-lets are owned by someone else, maybe another family member, cousin or aunt or uncle, okay? So father's got a portfolio, he's passed away. The family now, um, the children are maybe executives and, and are going through it and they're beneficiaries. The wife and the children are beneficiaries of that, um, of the estate. And they essentially need to move those assets from the father's name who's passed away to theirs. So generally probates gets done and that's an absolute nightmare by itself. So they've gone through the whole hell of probate, paying the solicitor all these fees. They've had enough of spending all this money. They've probably got no attachment to these properties anyway, but you know, it's a bit of a hassle and, and, and there needs to be transferred and obviously to look after the family's interest. So you've gone through the probate, the pain of probate, and, and now you have to actually practically do this. Now, there are a couple of options, okay? Essentially, the lenders want their money back. The lenders that, that, are, are, that are on the, those properties, they want their money back, okay? You're not the owner, okay? Yes, you've got probate done, so that's important, you probably need to get probate done. Um, so you've got some rights, but how they work is quite different. Some lenders no longer lend anymore. So there are lenders like Mortgage Express, the old Northern Rock, those type of lenders, they, they, don't, uh, they don't do new lending anymore, okay? So they treat things differently. So if it's a lender that's no longer around, they treat the case a little bit differently. If it's a lender that is around, they can probably have more of a discussion, you can have more of a discussion with them. The ones that are not around, they just want their money back. So when it comes to these type of transactions, uh, there's really two routes you can go down. You can go down a remortgage of a buy to let. Okay, so you, you, you go for, a, sorry, you can do a purchase by a buy to let. Um, some lenders will see as a purchase, some lenders will see a remortgage. We've got to work that out between, between us and the client and the lender. Um, so you can get a traditional uh, mortgage now. Uh, you never used to as much, but there are more and more lenders that will allow for this to happen if probates be done and so forth. Um, but if there's any complications, then you've got to go down, sort of um, get a loan, a type of bridging finance to make the transfer happen at the same time and then refinance it. So it's double the cost, double the time. Um, so the way the way it works from a, a remortgage perspective is, um, or, or, or getting a mortgage, is you've got to meet the buy to let criteria. So you might be, have to be a homeowner already. Um, some lenders would want you to have a, at least one buy to let um, to be an experienced landlord. Because again, it, it falls under the consumer buy to let rules because you've inherited a property. So greater protection uh, uh, is given uh, and must be given and greater attention and special permissions are needed by the broker like us, which we have, as well as the lenders to be able to deal with that type of transaction. So if you are the person who's benefiting from these, so if they're gonna come into your estate, for example, if you only have one residential property and you're not an experienced landlord, some lenders will not do it because they don't have consumer, um, uh, consumer buy to let uh, licenses, okay? So it's not straightforward. It, you can't just transfer it into your name if you don't own an asset. Even if you own an asset, some lenders may not do it. Okay, because they'll see as a consumer buy to let. But there are lenders that will do it uh, for consumer buy to let as long as you own a property. So in a recent case that I've got, the, 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 one of the beneficiaries does not own anything. So they're bas basically, they don't own an asset. So they, and, and they're gonna receive a couple of properties within them. So it's a consumer buy to let, but it's also a first time buyer. Okay, and a lot of the buy to let lenders will not do that. Um, so what we will have to do is get a bridging finance and it's a consumer uh, uh, bridging finance. So it's a regulated bridging finance. We have to get that first, 
transfer the property or at least one of the properties in their name uh, and then and then move them off because by the time maybe hold it within six months so they're receiving some rent uh, and then by the time the six months is over then they'll be seen as a homeowner okay and then you can transfer the other assets in okay because then one of the biggest issues is if they're not a homeowner but we can make them a homeowner. If they're getting three assets come in, maybe do one of them. Sometimes they're under pressure. Sometimes they're under pressure to do it quickly. So we may have to do two or three, okay? So it, it's very difficult and everything's very bespoke, but um, inherited properties, uh, there's more and more people holding on to these properties and passing away uh, where they haven't done estate planning. Um, so there are needs for specialist advice. Obviously, you need to speak to your uh, probate practitioner or your legals. They need to be involved in the transactions. Um, we certainly have dealt with a lot of uh, inherited properties. Obviously, we you know we've tried to do whether if if it's uh, if it is an option to be able to go down the mortgage route, it's going to be a lot cheaper than going down the bridging route and the other solutions out there. Okay, um, so the first instance we will look at mortgage options. However, uh, like I said, a, a few years ago there was a less, less and less lenders doing this, but um, there's more lenders looking at the mortgage options, uh, providing you meet their certain criteria. So we always try to go down that route first. Um, but you know, sometimes uh, people have got you know maybe adverse credit where they've had past credit issues, maybe their employment uh, doesn't fit the lending pro profile, maybe it's the property type, the property is not in a good enough condition. Um, we've had one where the, the, the property was just on a multi-let, the, the people who inherited it didn't even know what to do, so it took a bit of time to get the, the tenants out. So there are reasons why you don't just go for a normal mortgage okay um and you know there are costs involved there are uh, things that you know legal implications involved so um really you should get some uh, advice around that hopefully you found this useful to give you some idea of what happens with inherit inherited specifically around buy to lets obviously um the, in, when it comes to residential mortgages they're a little bit different this is really aimed at the the buy to let portfolios and and the buy to let properties that come up um, through the inheritance sort of uh, um, route. Um, please do like and subscribe this uh, if you found this useful uh, and please call, call me if you need anything on 0207 993 and visit our website www.nicheadvice.co.uk. Thank you so much.